And the gentlelady from Massachusetts, Ms. Presley, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Secretary. I'm so grateful that you're here. Um, grateful for what you do, and you and your team each and every day, but I'm grateful you're here today uh, to set the record straight to ensure that there is uh, no erasure of the contributions of HUD during these consequential times, and no mischaracterization or uh, undermining of your commitments. Uh, I thank you and your team uh, in particular for your accessibility, your responsiveness, your partnership, especially on uh, the impact of the HOTMA regulations on our constituents. And again, I'm just uh, grateful that you're at the helm. Thank you. I represent the Massachusetts 7th Congressional District. Uh, this is a district that is incredibly unequal. We're in a three mile radius from Cambridge to Roxbury, um, the blackest part of my district. Life expectancy drops by 30 years, median household income by $50,000. There was a color of wealth report done um, by the Federal Reserve of Boston uh, that uh, counted black wealth at $8 uh, compared to the wealth of white households at $247,500. Uh, I believe that has everything, that gap, to do with housing. Everything starts at home. It uh, is a critical determinant of health, uh, social and economic no mobility, um, and uh, certainly, uh, given the disparities and the crisis, has in, in many ways uh, contributed to our racial wealth gap. Uh, and so uh, I just want to uh, pick up there, because we've enumerated the many ways that this housing crisis is showing up and growing, and it certainly has a disparate impact on black families. Black home ownership rates are at 41.7%. Uh, That's 30 points lower, lower than white households. Um, and so uh, I wonder, uh, Secretary Fudge, um, in 2024, even when black people do own their homes, we are subjected to discriminatory home appraisals where our homes are valued less than they would be if owned by a white family. Can you update us on the work you have been leading at HUD to protect homeowners from discriminatory home appraisals and anything you can share on diversifying the profession, which is 90% white? and two-thirds male. Thank you for the question, Congresswoman. Uh, we have uh, a, a project that helps talk about valuation equity. We know that there is a great deal of redlining still going on in this country. We know that models are based upon the redlining. And so when our appraisals go out, they already go out with a bias mm -hmm. because the program is designed with a bias. So what we have been doing is negotiating with and meeting with uh, the appraisal subcommittee and those to talk about how we bring more fairness into the process. And I would say on their behalf, they have been listening. They are trying to work with us because you cannot say to me that there is no bias in a field that is 90 to 95 percent all white males. When they go into our communities, they have no idea what our communities are worth. And so what we do is we devalue properties in communities that are black and brown. And, it's, and you can just look at it, I mean, it's a fact. But we increase value in communities that are non-people of color. So we, we are getting, we are making progress. We are also, in our Fair Housing Office, we are starting to bring legal action against those that we have found to be discriminatory. And we are in the process of suing quite a few people. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And I want to get one more issue on the record here, um, and that is addressing uh, the prison to homelessness pipeline. Uh, in my district, we've had folks, uh, returning citizens, 30% uh, of that population released to uh, shelter um, because of the discrimination. In a survey of over 700 formerly incarcerated people, eight out of 10 respondents said they were ineligible for or denied housing because of their criminal record. Now this is fueled in part by tenant screening reports which often include inaccurate information that lead to housing denial. Secretary Fudge, what steps has HUD taken to remove barriers to housing for people with criminal records? And I should add that I do have a, a, a bill to address this uh, called the Housing First Act, but I would love to hear um, uh, what HUD is doing. We have a rule that is saying to everyone that it is housing discrimination to only use a person's criminal background as a decision point as to whether they should stay in public housing. There is no rule that prevents them 
So we're working to make sure that we change it. I'm very, very happy and proud of the work that we are doing in that regard. Thank you. It's really critical also to breaking the cycles of recidivism. So it's a matter of fairness, but also um, that prison to homelessness pipeline does contribute to recidivism. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I thank the